Hello, this is Sister Marie Therese, and welcome to my fourth book critique. My first and featured text for this set is Jack's Garden by Henry Cole. This book follows the story of a young boy who starts a garden, and the reader is invited to learn about and watch its growth with him. This book is filled with fascinating illustrations that inform the reader about the tools used in the garden, the little creatures that visit it, and all the beautiful plants that grow within it. Planning a garden requires some basic math skills, like being able to measure lengths to know how much space each plant needs. For my first lesson plan, I would like to follow the Indiana Common Core Standards for second grade math. Upon learning these skills, students will be able to put their knowledge to use by planning their own garden. Hopefully, they can help with planning a community garden, whether it is through a community organization, a parish or school, or a boy or girl scouts group. They can record their progress with an awesome tool like Powtoon, so they can share this process with the larger community through a website or local news organization. My second lesson plan follows the life science standards for third grade in Indiana. The project as a whole will be starting a flower garden for the parish, possibly outside the church or grotto. Through collaboration, the students will come up with a plan for their garden and be able to watch its successive growth as it blossoms, as does Jack with his garden. For starting off our class project, I have created a thing link in which the students will be able to find multiple resources, giving them ideas and teaching them about the life cycle of flowers and how they grow. There are multiple videos that the children can watch, as well as different web links going to sites such as National Geographic so that they can learn even more. There is also a link to Burpee, a website in which the students can look at various different flowers and learn more about them to be able to contribute ideas for the class. And finally, I have created a Padlet discussion in which the students can share their ideas. I have had my own idea of adding anemone, a great flower for a garden. The next text that I would like to share with you is Penny from Heaven by Jennifer Holm. Set in the 1950s, this story follows the coming of age of a young girl named Penny. Penny lives with her mother and her maternal grandparents, her father having passed away when she was a baby. He came from a large Italian family in which Penny is greatly loved, especially by her uncles. The reader is invited to follow her and her family through the unforgettable summer of 1953, a time filled with confusion and grief, but also love and experiences of growth that will change her life. Our next text, It Could Always Be Worse, is a Jewish folktale retold by Margot Zimak and is about a man who thinks that he lives a very difficult life. Desperate for help, he seeks the counsel of his rabbi, who gives him some unexpected advice. Yet, with trust, he obeys, though it takes a while before he understands the lesson that he is being taught. Now we have White Bird by R.J. Palacio. Through this graphic novel, readers are introduced to Sarah, a young Jewish girl living in France during World War II. She lives a beautiful, happy life, but it is quickly disrupted when the Nazis invade France in 1940. But, because of an unlikely friend named Julian, her life is saved, though this is not the end of her heartbreaking but inspiring story. Our fifth text is Babushka and the Three Kings by Ruth Robbins. Most likely based off a poem by an American poet in 1907, this is not a real Russian folktale. Despite this, the tale follows the story of a woman named Babushka, Russian for grandmother. One evening, she is visited by three kings who have become lost in their search for a child. More concerned about her own affairs, she turns down their request for help. Upon realizing the opportunity that she has missed, Babushka continues to seek the Christ child year after year, leaving gifts for young children as she passes through their villages. Here we have another story by Josephine Nobisso, Take It to the Queen, A Tale of Hope. She writes the story of a generous king who greatly blesses his people and promises them a beautiful queen and prince. But when the people grow cold in their love and generosity in return, they are reduced to desolation. The people must seek the aid of their queen, a native of their own town and people, to receive mercy for their wrongdoing. This tale is a moving allegory to the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary in our own lives. For our next text, we have Everything on a Waffle by Polly Horvath. Readers are introduced to a young girl named Primrose from the small Canadian town of Coal Harbor. When her parents disappear during a storm out at sea, 
Primrose's life is turned upside down. Her uncle comes to take her under his care and the owner of a restaurant where everything is served on a waffle also befriends and teaches her many new recipes, which Primrose shares with readers. Believed to be an orphan by everyone except for Primrose herself, readers are invited to join her in her story of hope and adventure. Our final text is The Big Mooncake for Little Star. In this sweet story, Grace Lynn shares with readers a modern myth that is based off her favorite Asian holiday, the Mid-Autumn Moon Festival. After Little Star and Mama make a big yellow mooncake, it needs to be left in the sky to cool. But it is too tempting for Little Star to resist taking a little bite each night. Surely Mama will not notice. It isn't long though before the full moon has waned into a complete new moon. A new mooncake must be made, playfully showing the loving relationship between mother and daughter. And this has been my fourth book set. Thank you so much for joining me.